Greetings hobbies, this is Arsans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can make complicated trim on complex objects. So trim is relatively easy to do on Blender for simple objects. It's where you get into complex objects that are made up of lots of different curves that this gets more complicated. We can see this example here on this assault pod that I've made and you can see that we've got this trim here and it's really nice. It's really cleanly attached to the outside of this object. We've got it traveling through curves without any problem. And we've also got these complex bits of trim in the center that come nicely together without join lines. And it prints really cleanly as well. And do bear in mind that this is focusing for this clean overall appearance for 3D printing. You can also see a similar thing on this missile rack that I've created. And again, we've got trim going around rounded objects with different cutouts on the outside, but also cutouts on the inside of the trim, which means that this could be relatively difficult to do with some methods of creating trim. But actually with the method I'm going to show you, it's pretty foolproof and relatively easy to do. So to demonstrate this, I've got this front of a jet bike, which I've designed previously, and I've gone back to an earlier save on it so I can demonstrate what I do to make the trim. Now, this is a relatively complex object. It's made up of this curved shape with flat sections. And importantly, it's got a section that's been cut out of it at the front, and I've still got the cutter for it there. In fact, this is going to be quite important, so I'm going to name this front cutter so that we can reference it really easily later. So what I'm going to do is just delete out all of the other bits that aren't relevant to this, and then we'll just have a look at this part of the shape and how we're going to create this trim. I'm going to start by applying all of these modifiers so that I've got access to the mesh. So I want to quickly talk about other methods of creating trim on complex objects we can use and why I don't use them. But also do bear in mind that some of these techniques sort of feed into the method that I do use just to create something that's better. So the first is by cutting the mesh and then using that to create our trim. So the reason I don't like this is firstly, it's very, very annoying. It takes a long time to select the individual faces. And in some complex meshes, this would be an absolute nightmare in terms of time. The knife tool also makes assumptions as it cuts where it tries to put itself closer to certain edges, which creates a slightly wobbly shape to some of the trim. Finally, you can do this on curved bits where you're just gonna use the curve section as a knife. And that does work again, all right, but it takes a long time to select all of the faces. And when you do it, it can create some really nasty problems at corners. Beyond that, this is also a destructive technique, which means if you change your mind about anything, you're not gonna be able to do anything about it. And creating those cutouts on that trim or adding new sections to the trim is basically impossible after you've done it. And it will just create really horrible joins. The other method that's quite interesting is to create a plane. You can shrink wrap it to your object and then you can solidify it and extrude it out to create your trim. Now this has some benefits in that you can set how thick you want this to be with your solidify modifier, so that's quite nice. But again, it just is a little bit awkward, a bit time consuming, and it doesn't give a fantastic result. Now here I'm doing it in a sped up way. You could probably add a subdivision surface to this to make it smoother as well, but it's very difficult to get a decent final result to this and especially on the curved edges, trying to get something that's equal thickness to what you've done before is really tricky. Also, when you finally do combine this together with the Boolean, it often creates some really ugly join points, which is gonna require a lot of cleanup. And you just don't want that. It's just gonna take more time than it's worth to try and fix the problems that you've created while making this. So the important thing to note about this technique, coming back to our original, is that we are going to be using something that's a reductive technique, as in I'm going to take things away from this shape, not add things on. So this outer edge here is going to end up being the outer edge of the trim. It's not that we're gonna add trim on the outside. So that's gonna be really important in terms of as you design your shape, you need to bear that in mind and make it bigger than you want it to be, or at least make it to the size that you want the trim's gonna be. Because effectively, if I just bring in a cube, and let's S to scale that up and then move it over here, what I'm gonna do is if this was our object, obviously this is a lot simpler. Let's inset that, that's I again, so it's inset on both faces. What we're going to do is we're going to be insetting this inwards. In effect, obviously this is very simplified, I'm going to be doing that to inset our object to create the trim as opposed to other methods where you might say, for example, grab those and do the same thing and pull them out. Now that has an important effect in that it's gonna create a cleaner edge. For example, these edges here are not particularly clean. They've got more geometry than they need. So there are definitely benefits to it. It just requires you thinking about it as you're creating the object. 
So what I'm going to do is go into edge mode and the first thing we need to do is select the places where we want our trim to be. So to make my life easier for that, what I'm going to do is go to select and then select sharp edges and then I'm going to go to edge and then I'm going to mark sharp. So generally this will work. My mark sharp turns yellow because I've set it up that way. I think yours will probably turn blue if you haven't changed anything around. And this means that if I come to let's say face mode and I select this face, let's go L, then I can select everything inside those sharp points really quickly. If yours isn't working, it's because you need to turn the sharp on here in this box where you've got the select linked. So make sure that sharp is selected. And for example, I can press F and clean up that edge really nicely. So what I'm gonna do is select L here, there, and then there, and then there. So that is selecting the places where I want my trim to be. Now you could select this manually by hand, going in and selecting all these edges. That would just take, well, a long time. It'd be very tedious. So this is a nice quick way of doing it. Then I'm gonna shift and D to duplicate those faces, escape to leave them in place, and then P and separate by selection. So now I've got my internal bit here and I've got my outer edge there that we're gonna use. Now, this is the next bit that's important to understand. I'm gonna bring a copy of this out. I've still got my original one there that's the outside faces, but we are gonna use a solidify modifier here and it's important to understand why we do a solidify modifier in a certain way. Now you would think that what we could do is basically cut bits out of this and then add a solidify modifier to make this trim. For example, I could solidify here and drag it out this way. And if we've cut sections out of this, this would make our trim. But there's problems with this. Our solidify modifier on the outside generally causes problems. So you've got these horrible transitions here that don't look very nice. You've got the same thing here. So this is not gonna make very nice looking trim by itself, which is why we have to apply a bit of a trick to this. The other thing that's worth noting is that if I solidify this inside and then apply this, this creates even more issues. And you can see these lines crossing over each other and here. So we have to approach this in a way that's not gonna cause these problems on the inside. So that is why we're gonna do this in the order that I do. So I've got my outer section here and all I'm gonna do is shrink it down. So I'm just gonna S and bring it down to about the size that I want it to be or the thickness I want the trim to be. And then I'm gonna G and Z to move that so that it's equal thickness on all sides. So what I'm doing here is looking that this is equal to this. Then I'm gonna apply the same to the front of this. So I want this trim to come in, but it's gone a little bit too far here. So I'm gonna S on the Y and just pull that out to about there. Now you'll notice that I'm not worrying too much about where this is gonna be in terms of where I want my trim, which is along for clarity. I'm gonna want my trim here and then along here. And I'm not worried about the fact that this is thicker in some places than others because the trim is gonna well come further in than that. So it's gonna be about there. So we don't need to worry about this issue that appears to be there of this going too far. And I'll explain how that works in a second. So once we've done that with our inside object, now we can solidify it and we're gonna add modifier solidify and we want this solidify coming outwards basically wider than the object's gonna be. So we've got it sticking out the side. And again, we've got the same issues here of we get this sort of ugly overlap and not perfectly rounded edges on certain areas. But importantly, this is why this method works. This is on a place where you're not gonna see it. The only bit we're gonna see is the inside edge of this or the inside surface of this that's here. And that's gonna be really clean because we've solidified outwards instead of inwards. So what I'm gonna do is select that Shift select the object that's in the middle and then control and minus. And make sure this is on exact. Fast is generally gonna cause yourself some problems. And then I'm gonna call this with F2, the inset. So it's easy to find. Now, just for simplicity, what I will do is clean up this file so we've only got these objects because at the moment I've got lots of stuff in here that I don't need from when I created this. And I just realized it's not gonna help on this explanation at all. So what we've got is our inset here. If I just press H to hide that, you can see what this is doing. It is forcing its way or booleaning away the mesh so that we've got this here. And you can see what's gonna happen. We're gonna end up with this trim, but at the moment it's incredibly thin here and very ugly here. So let's get on and fix this. So this is the bit where there's some tricks where you can ignore this, but it makes life a lot easier. And having done this a lot, it's the better way to do this. So 
play around with it, but you can take my word for it if you want to. So I'm going to grab cube and then S to make that larger, and I'm going to bring it over to this edge here. And what I want to do is I want to effectively bring this in, so that's Shift and Z and then G and Y. I want to bring this in however large or thick I want my trim to be. So let's go to maybe a bit more than there, something like there. That's how far I want my trim to come in. And then this becomes really simple. If you've got hard ops, you can just Q and then ever scroll to bring back your inset cutter. If not, you can just over here, find your inset cutter and unhide it. Select the thing where you want your trim to be. So in this instance, it's the cube. I'm gonna just F2 and rename this trim cutter just so it's easy to find. So select the trim cutter, select the inset and control and minus that from the inset. And you'll see instantly that brings back our trim or creates a trim. Now what's fantastic about this is this is non-destructive. So for example, if I change my mind about how thick this is, I can press G and Y and bring this forward and it's gonna create more trim. So this is just a really quick, easy way to do things and you can fiddle around with it as much as you want after you're done. Now we're gonna want the same thing at the bottom where I want some trim there. So I'm just gonna shift A, mesh, bring in a cube, and then again, scale this up and bring this to where I want this trim to be. Now, a big trick that I want to mention is this. Firstly, you would assume that the easiest way to do this is to select this bit now and then also cut this out of the inset section. Now that does work, but I will say that I've actually found this has a tendency to cause more issues this way and you will get a cleaner result and a more consistent result if instead of deleting this from this shape, if you actually add this to your trim cutter, so I'm gonna press Control and plus with ball tools to make a union, this actually brings everything into one trim cutter and it for some reason just gives a better result. I found I've had less problems with booleans not working or causing issues by doing it this way. And you can see now we've got our trim along the bottom as well. That's just H and H that, and you can see where we are now. Let's just undo that to bring them back. And then finally, we need to do the same thing with our front. And we've got our front cutter that we had previously, the one that made this nice curved shape. So I'm gonna duplicate that with Shift and D. And then once again, S to scale that up. And then let's G to bring that to a point where it's gonna create the correct thickness for our trim. And then I'm going to select that, shift select the trim cutter, control and plus once more, and then I can hide everything other than my object. And you can see now we've got an incredibly clean trim. It's got no issues on the outer edges, no issues on the inner faces or the joining sections. It's just really, really clean. Now this technique has other benefits to it as well. And the most important one is the ease that you can add additional detail to this. Because at the moment, as I mentioned, this is all entirely non-destructive. So if I ever scroll and bring that back, that's using hard ops. If you don't have hard ops, you can just do it by making the cutter either appear or disappear. Just when you've got a very large complex shape, it's easier using hard ops. What I can do is say I want to add some more detailing to the top of this. I can just, well, add in some more shapes. So let's S and scale this on everything other than the X. So shift and X. Let's make that nice and big there. G and Y. And then I can do exactly the same thing here. Come to this one. Q and ever scroll to reveal my trim cutter or unhide it there if you don't have hard ops. Select the area of the new added details. Select the trim cutter. Control and plus to add it to the trim cutter. And now we've added top bit of trim. You can see how quick and easy this is to do. And what's really cool about this is if I undo this and let's say control and R to add in an edge loop, let's say there, and then let's control and B that. And then let's select those, S and then X. Let's make that wider, let's G and Y that back. And then let's grab those and M at center. And then same thing here, M at center and then I can G and Y those back, I can create something like an arrow really quickly. So something maybe a little bit more chaotic and then add that, so control and plus. And now we've got an arrow, really, really quick and easy. The join is perfect, there is no issues there and we've got this really smooth overall shape. And so I wanted to do something like taking sections out of these, something like you'd see on maybe something a bit more Mechanicus related 
let's shift an A mesh, bring in a cylinder, and then let's up that to 64, S and Z to increase that on the Z axis. And then let's G, let's put that somewhere there. Let's scale that down. And then we can Alt and X to mirror that. And now I can delete this from my trim cutter. So Control and minus. And that will, if I H that and H that, delete that from my trim. And again, perfectly clean. No issues. It will 3D print perfectly. It's just a really effective method of making trim. So hopefully you're going to find some use for that on your projects. Like I said, for me, this is the most efficient way of making trim with the best results. It's not to mean that it is the only way of creating trim and the only way of getting results. It is the way that works best for me that I've not only had the most success with, but also the least problems creating these complex shapes. If you did find that useful, please do hit the like button. It helps YouTube share it around and it means other people that might find this useful are also more likely to see the video. And it does help the channel grow, which obviously is a nice thing to see for me. If you'd like to support the channel any further, there are some links, which are affiliate links in the description to the various add-ons that I use. It doesn't cost you any extra to purchase through those links, but it does mean a little bit of money goes to the channel. And also there is a Patreon page, which if you've got a couple of spare dollars a month, it's one of the things that helps keep these videos free. And I do think that having this information available free for everyone is really important. Have a great day, guys.